إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة اللهم صل وبارك وسلم عليك يا رسول الله أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam It came up in the Quran One of the supplications of Ibrahim عليه السلام The last sentence That inshallah today we're going to talk about We're going to try to reflect upon the last sentence فقال إبراهيم عليه السلام He said يوم لا ينفع لا مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم The day that your kids your money will do no benefit to you. The only thing that's going to benefit you that day is your heart. If you came to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure heart. Qalbun salim. Reflect upon it, my brothers and sisters in Islam. What kind of heart do we have? This is the time. We have plenty of time to take a moment and to think what kind of heart do I have? This is the time. You have time. Once you're gone, that's it. Nothing is going to be beneficial to you. Nothing. So it is said there is three types of hearts. People, mankind, can possess one of the three types of hearts. قلب ميت وقلب مريض وقلب سليم. A dead heart. A man with a heart that is dead. His heart is completely dead. Another man. He possesses a defective heart. He has a heart, but, but his heart has a disease. There is defect on his heart. And the third kind, Allahumma ja'alna minhum, qalbun salim, pure heart. A heart that is pure, clean, pure. So inshallah today we'll talk about these three sorts of hearts, what to look for, what to avoid, and what to pay attention to. Because see, if we right now from, you know, from different angle of point of view, if we're to judge the Muslim ummah, the entire ummah, we're not talking about a particular person or particular masjid or no, we're talking about the entire ummah. We can firmly assume that the ummah is suffering from defective hearts. A lot of hearts are defective. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, start by the dead heart. We see it all over. It doesn't have to be in America or even in the Middle East. Even in the, subhanAllah, in Saudi Arabia. Full of dead hearts. These are the hearts. Money, if we relate to it. Al-jismu, jismu, insan. Wal-qalbu, qalbu, hayawan. The look looks like a human being. But the heart has an animal heart. 
To bring the picture a little closer, this, this man is constantly, daily, his ultimate goal, his most, his highest concern is how to secure his fundamental existential needs or what he cares about. He cares about food, where he's going to eat, where he's going to drink. He cares about mating. And the third thing he cares about is security, where he's going to sleep. Exactly like an animal. And you know what? He could be a very, very intellectual person. When it comes to dunya knowledge, he can be a big scientist, he can be a, a rocket scientist. But again, what is the motive? To secure his existential needs for security. That's it. That's all what he cares about. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this kind. Well, ayyadhu billah. Just we're mentioning it as we're moving forward, inshallah. The second heart, the defective heart, a diseased heart. This is a man that knows. He knows there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows there is a creator. He knows that it's not new to him. But you know what? He's struggling between two paths. One path, his desires. And one path, obeying Allah. He's struggling. One day he obeys. One day he disobeys. One day he overcomes his desires. One day shaitan has the upper hand on him. He's in constant struggle. And the cause of these hearts, it's mixed. It's a mix. Number one, number one, the reason for this heart is the lack of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't know Allah. He thinks he knows. And yeah, and he can say it. This song, he knows Allah, he believes Allah, he might even be praying his five times, doing a little bit of zagat here and there, but deep inside, he doesn't know who is Allah. He's not sure. And see, again, if we look, if we pay close attention to the Hal al Ummah, country by country, city by city, town by town all over the Muslim countries, full of defective hearts, full. The reason behind it, my brothers and sisters, as we said, number one, the lack of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, when we are born to a Muslim family and we grew up in Muslim environment, that does not prevent us and that does not stop us from living consciously and living and being aware not just being aware but constant seeking of the reasons behind our beliefs okay we grew up and we came in the muslim family alhamdulillah but it does not stop there it does not and the best ayah that describe this point of view, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُوا مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاءُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ When you tell them, Follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will tell you we're only obeying and following what our parents taught us. 
Subhanallah, the Muslim Ummah, we're doing it. We've been doing it for centuries now, and we're not aware of it. We're not aware. See, if somebody was born in a Hindu family, or in a Buddhist family, or whatever it is, it does not stop there. You come to an age, you reach such an age, that you have to wonder. You have to wonder, what am I doing? What am I following? What is this religion that I'm following? What is it? See, saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, again, it does not stop you from acting res responsibly and consciously. We came in a Muslim environment, Alhamdulillah, that's it. We don't use our brains, we don't think, we don't, we don't try to find out. What is it, this religion that I'm following? See, subhanAllah, Quran is full of examples. Full. يعني قصة سيدنا إبراهيم ولا قصة سيدنا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام All the prophets. يعني you think ما it's there just yeah it's there just there no reason for it. أولئك الذين هدى الله فبهداهم اقتد. These are قدوة. The prophets are قدوة. In every single day of our life, every single moment of our lives, prophets are our قدوة. It started. At a very early age, they were born in an environment, some of them, of course, not all of them, in an environment that worship idols. It did not stop there. Oh, mashallah, my family, oh, all right, I follow, that's it. You know, ma, no thinking, ma, no. It was a struggle, it was extreme struggle to discover who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah? They struggle to discover who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is again where most Muslims, we fall behind. We don't even try again to seek the reasons behind our beliefs. We don't. And in deep, most of us, most of the Muslims, deep inside us, there is some sort of superstition. Yes, they say la ilaha Allah and everything, but saying is something and acts are completely different now. Different, different, completely different. Yani you think subhanallah, again, all these Muslim countries, all of them, what is going on over there and all these governments and all this noise we keep hearing about and, and, and these killers and all this, ma, you think Maneha, these are ma, Ashab Qulub and Salima? Bashar al Asad, or so many, so many. You think these people, Maneha, they have a heart? They say, La ilaha illallah, pay attention, huh? be very careful. They say, La ilaha illallah, and they pray, Jama'ah sometimes. They hang out around some ulama. They've been to Hajj. They give zakat. They support charities. But you think that they, Mane, these people, they have a pure heart? Absolutely not. This is where the delusion comes. This is where the delusion comes when we grow up in an environment. And again, Mane, not to generalize, there is always exception. But if we look to the collective outcome of this ummah, we're on the bottom of the junk. Wallahi, we're on the bottom of the trash. Trash keeps piling up on top of us every day. Every day trash keeps piling up on, on top of us. Why? How did we end up this? How did we end up like this? The adaption of wrong, mistaken values. Again, the lack of knowledge. We inherited generation over generation over generations. 
No knowledge. No knowledge whatsoever. Plus, adaptions of my so many mistaken values, so many wrong values. But we grew up with it. It's normal. It's part of us. Traditions, all, all these. ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان. Islam is here. These are here. These values are here. No, no sense whatsoever. But again, we open our eyes from the very moment we open our eyes. We're nourishing. We're we're feeding. This environment is feeding us, and these values we're getting accustomed to it. And some of us, if not most of us, we come to my head to a point of like contradiction. What is what, what's going on? Something must be wrong. Something must be wrong. <clears throat> yani the most signs of the defective hearts, the biggest signs, weakness, weakness. We don't even want to show our identity. We are so ashamed of it. We are so ashamed that we are Muslims. I go to my work where I don't want to. Sh I don't want to show that I'm Muslim. I know some brothers came from back home, Muhammad or Abdullah, and America became Alex, became John, became Mike. What does that tell you? I'll tell you what, what was that tell you. That person is very weak. Very weak, he cannot stand up. Yes, I'm Muslim, and you have an issue, bring it on. I will talk to you, I will teach you. From science, from whatever you call it, I will teach you. Yes, this is Islam, because of A, B, C, D. I'm Muslim, and I'm proud of it. This is the biggest signs. We're so ashamed to show that we're Muslims. We fear. No, but Alex, my name is Alex. Yani subhanallah. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى لا تجد قوما يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو ابناء أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزب ألا إن حزب الله أولئك هم المفلحون سبحان الله you're Muhammad but if somebody sees you uh, that's no difference then David or John you can't even tell the difference we're ashamed that is the biggest sign of a defective heart. A heart uh, he is Muslim, yes. Or she is Muslim. We are, brothers, please come forward, brothers. Please, it's, it's, real, it's getting near a crowd. Please, some brothers are coming. Please, come forward. Move forward, inshallah. You know, and similarly, this to brothers and sisters. Both combined. We don't need to, to go like in deep details, but we see it all around us. You know, like last week I was driving by, I came through by, I drove by a cafe, a Muslim cafe, Middle Eastern cafe. The owner on the, like on the outside in the front had like sign. They sign a man and a woman. A man, mashallah, with a imama. It's a picture. A man with a imama and big beard. Uh, the Muslim look with a hookah in his mouth. The woman next to him, mashallah, niqab. Picture of woman with niqab. And the woman again with shisha in her mouth too. Hookah. Both looking at each other. Yani, subhanallah. 
This is our situation right now. Subhanallah. In this, you, you know, I didn't stop, but I, I plan, inshallah, to go there and to talk to him. Like, what do you mean, brother? What do you mean? Yani, we're so very, we're very civilized. That has not, nothing to do with civilization. Has nothing to do. We're modern. Again, this is Maniha, we're ashamed of that identity. Or we try to, uh, to cover it. Yes, I'm Muslim, but you know what? I can have a tattoo. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Muslim with, with tattoos. And my other, we're, it's unconscious, but we're tr what we're trying to do here, we're trying to adapt. We're trying to adapt to a filthy environment. To a, to, and we're trying to import some filthy values. So many Muslim families, and it's all over. It's all over. Muslims, Mania, and now we came to a time Mania, where we identify personal worth with financial status and social status. Yaqulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again, and Allah la yamdhuru ila suwarikum wa amwali. Allah does not care how you look. Cute, bold, ma, ugly, ma, ma, mashallah, muscular, ma, driving a Ferrari, ma. Allah does not care about that. Neither your money, how much money you have. Allah does not care about that. But He cares about your deed and your hearts. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وكفى والسلام والصلاة على عباده الذين اصطفى We came to the third type of heart, brothers and sisters in Islam. Please, please bring just 5% of consciousness right now. Don't let your mind travel thousands of miles away. No, just please bring a little bit of consciousness. It concerns every one of us. Every one of us. Our families, our, everybody. قلب سليم. سبحان الله هذا القلب السليم. This is the heart that discovered Allah سبحانه وتعالى. يعني no one set up the best examples like the prophets. All the prophets, mashallah, radiallahu anhu. Those are the examples for us to follow with the pure heart. One of the signs of these pure hearts, brothers and sisters in Islam, see, mankind is in a journey in this life isn't a journey we all agree on that mankind is a journey and that journey is divided yani, by two faces two faces divide that journey if the man fully fulfill those faces mashallah أولئك مع الذين أنعم أنعم الله عليهم من الصديقين والنبيين والصديقين والشهداء. Those they will be, they will accompany the prophets and the martyrs in Jannah, inshallah. So again, these two faces, phase one, discovering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not rely, neither your parents nor your uncles. Do not rely, rely on nobody to teach you who is Allah. Yes, listen. Absolutely. You can listen. But you know what? This needs to be approached with what we call a critical thinking. Discover on your own. Discover who is Allah. 
Learn. Learn who is Allah. Yani how do you spend your time? Potato couching in front of TV, channel over channel. What are you doing? That's a duty upon you. Discover. Fa'alam. Fa'alam. Know that there is no God but Allah. It's a duty upon you. It's a duty. Cannot depend on somebody, nobody else. Like one of my friends one, one time was telling me, I don't care, man, as long as my parents, they're happy with me, they supplicate for me, I don't care about the rest. If I pray, I don't pray, I don't care. That's it, my mother's supplication will get me a green light, will get me straight to Jannah. Full of this, this misinterpreted ideology. Unfortunately, in, in, all, in all our families, Maya, there is a lot of that, a lot of mistaken, a lot of mistakes that we have to assume our own responsibility and find out. Find out on your own. The phase number two, that all prophets went through it. All the prophets, once they discovered who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they moved to help others discover who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is another duty. That is another duty on all of us. You say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that's a duty. And yani with the big extended meaning, that is the full accomplishment of, of Khalifatullah fil Arf. It has an extended meaning. But that's yani to, to summarize it, that is to discover who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to help others discover who is Allah. Of course. You know how, you know the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know how powerful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you dare to see many others disobeying Allah. It's normal? No, it's not normal. If you really know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot stand that. But of course, that's a different subject. The hikmah and all the, what comes with it, that's, that's a different subject. But we all should have that goal of helping others, of moving forward others towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a beautiful example in Quran. Qasat Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam. Again, all these stories of prophets, subhanallah. It's like an ocean that, never, that has no end. You will never reach the show. How much wisdom and how much knowledge and how much the meaning, man. so rich, very rich. Yunus alayhi salam discovered who is Allah. And he was calling his people towards Allah. But they refused. They didn't want to follow him. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he commanded him to give them a three days notes. If they're not going to repent, I'm going to destroy them. All of them. Yunus alayhi salam. Yani with this much suffering, he's, with that much suffering he saw from his people. Somehow he wanted to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani naqmah fall upon them. He wanted to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to see all of them destroyed, wiped. How much hard time they gave him. Look subhanallah where Yunus alayhi salam end up. Where did he end up? In a very, 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 very similar situation and condition to our ummah these days. We end up in a position that you know what? Our destiny is not in our hands.
Somebody else has the upper hand on me. I have to, uh, to follow them. See the picture, brothers and sisters in Islam? This is a prophet that he had little issues, but he repented eventually. But he had little issue with fully fulfilling that second phase of helping others discover who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflect upon that and do not think that this environment, you don't care about it. Whatever they do it, I don't care, man. No, brothers and sisters in Islam, both. The brothers and the sisters, both. Be very careful, be very conscious to that point. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt, wa'afina fi man afayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma a'tayt, وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ضالا إلا هديته ولا غائبا إلا رددته سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة